Hello, everybody, and welcome back to One Shot Entertainment. This is the One Shot Podcast. My name is Chris Famulero, and joining me today, we have Tommy Rinaldi, Olivia Klein, and Robert Ruskowski. Everybody, how are we doing, starting with Olivia? Doing good. I am coming off the high of my 22nd birthday um, and settling into my old age, so... (laughs) Your second <laughs> annual 21st birthday. It's just all downhill from here. Just... No, honestly, like the Trader Joe's employees were like, because I was buying alcohol and they were like, oh my God, like it's your birthday, whatever. And I was like, I'm redoing my 21st year on this earth. So I have like the 21 year old pass where I can just be drunk and stupid. Love it. You know, okay. it's a boring story when it starts off with the employees at Trader Joe's. Like, oh my God. <laughs> guys the employees at trader joe's you'll never believe this have you even been to a trader joe's um i have not there's one on Staten island i try not to go near it though <laughs> why not why? what's wrong with trader joe's <laughs> scares me <laughs> why does trader joe's scare you i stick to my main brand national expenses supermarket stores i don't know i just it it's why why get healthy food when you could just buy junk food you know why buy well, i don't why, know if trader why? joe's is specifically healthy food it's just like it's like the, the connotation of just like organic and like vegan and like gluten free and i'm just like give me give me my gluten give me my give me my non-vegan you know <laughs> give me my meat is what you want them to say <laughs> Give me my process. I don't think Trader Joe's isn't like a vegan friendly store. It's like they sell meat and cheese and dairy products. It's just. Yeah, you can make a bomb charcuterie board. That's meat and cheese. Crackers. You got to get it from Joe. You know, it's just him. From Joe himself. He trades. Listen, here's the thing Rob deals with already too many Joes in his life, so he can't (laughs) handle the fact that another Joe is in charge of the food. Because then I have to like put his last name in my contact list. It's a whole thing, you know. <laughs> you know when you like add add a contact to your phone and you got to write the last name to. No, Trader Joe's awesome. aren't really they're not really big in New Jersey. Like they're they're pretty big outside of New Jersey. Like my girlfriend is a huge Trader Joe. Like that's the only place she goes food shopping. Yeah, um, it's about and- the experience. Like they have it very like set up for like the season or like whatever like a like holiday or something. Um, so you, and they have like flowers and other cool things you can buy. So it's not just about food. Like, do you think it's a it's a much trendier food store than like what than you know like your chain food stores or like Aldi's and stuff like that? Uh, I I would say so. Yeah, especially because like now there are literal trends with specific Trader Joe's food, like the feta cheese block and the noodles. Did you see? Oh that? yeah, I've seen that. Has anyone made it? Yeah, made it. How was I'm guessing you're a fan. <laughs> so good. And it was so easy. Like, I'm not, I don't cook. I can't cook. Y'all know this, right? Um, so I was like, I put a block of cheese and tomatoes in a pan and put it in the oven. Check. Like, it was so easy. And, it was really good. <laughs> and then you just yeah. toss the pasta into it and mix it all up, right? Yeah. I, had it I mean, for simplicity, it's a pretty good, it's a pretty good meal. But Tommy, yeah, but what sure. have you been up to? Oh boy, I've been working. I've been I've been sleeping not much. Um, I've been uh, listening to a lot of music. Uh, Silk Sonic just came out with their single so far, um, and it's really really good. Anderson Pack and uh, I was gonna Brim say Mars. we gotta talk about it, right? Everybody listen to that song. It's yeah, it's so amazing. Uh, we expected this from the two of them, Bruno Mars and Anderson Pack, but um, I'm excited for the full album to finally come out uh, somewhat soon. There's and an album. Sorry. Yeah, there's supposed to be an album and not just one song. So it's just going to be grooves all, all all spring. Are they making a whole baby making album? Like, is that what they're yeah. going for? Because uh, Leave here the Door it. Open is baby making music is what it is. It's <laughs> 70s baby making music and it's great. Dude, Anderson Pack is just walking sex machine. Like, and Bruno <laughs> Mars on top of that, like, sign me up. Honestly, yeah. I was going to say, like, I know because both of their vo- voices, like, individually, really interesting, really cool. Um, but, like, Anderson Pack's voice in that song is just so good. It's so silky and, like, it just pulls you in from the start. And the part where he goes, 
in the west wing or the east wing and the Dude. west wing of this mansion it's just such a good like part of the song that perfectly leads into bruno mars's section it's so good i listen to that song so much yeah within the past 24 hours it's been on about seven times at least and it, it's so good uh the drum beat from anderson pack is impeccable he's really good at drumming um yeah top to bottom the song is really good that's been most of my past week or so is just work and listening to music so well, i know you've also been you've also been getting into it with a new a new body bag you have right you're punching things What's, how's that been going yeah that, that's my boy bob it stands for your body opponent bag or something like that yeah, yeah it um <laughs> it's been fun it's just a way to get me to work out because i don't feel like running anymore because my hips hurt and then um yoga would be fun again but i'm too lazy so this is a way to keep me in shape and have fun and all that good stuff do you have to have like do you have to know moves or can you just like attack you can just attack you just go for it i saw (laughs) i saw a really funny video this morning of this girl just like tossing it around and like getting on top of it and beating it up or like throwing a tree at it like all this other stupid stuff it was so funny. If you use but, the Bob body bag, you'll be able to pick up a tree. And throw it, <laughs> it was a really funny video. But yeah, I mean, I, I've done boxing before where it's just like messing around with friends or helping my brother. Uh, my friend's actually going to do an amateur fight. He wants me to like help him out and stuff like that. So it's good to be on top of my game to help him out and all that good stuff. So yeah, I, I mean, I love it. It's, it's a fun way to just put in music beat up something for 45 minutes and then go on with your day have you put a mustache on the bag yet no not yet because because you need to do it so it like it changes up your visual because like it needs to be like a stranger you know because if you get used to just beating a bob it's gonna be too easy yeah and it might be like a like, cycle oh, thing yeah he's a stranger you know yeah put put like lamb chops on him or something like yeah. that make it make it a little different that's what if you get what if you get giant slinkies right you guys remember slinkies right of course the slinkies arms. to where his arms would go and then put boxing gloves on the end of the slinkies so at least every time you punch there's some kind of force that sends one of the slinkies your way <laughs> so it brings like a parrying system into it and you yeah. just be i mean granted they're really slow punches because they're tiny they're slinkies so they're not like <laughs> a, a human arms but Keeps at you least on your you toes, could though. Hey, yeah. you have a switch do I have a switch? Yes. Yes, I do. Have you ever heard the the video game Arms? No. Because you just described the entire thing. <laughs> is that really it? <laughs> it's, it's boxing gloves and it's just, and it's just people punching each other. Oh. So it's a, I think it's called Arms. I'm like seventy percent sure, but I would look it up. I would buy it, and I, I would I would email them and say like, guys, you stole my idea because I just came up with this. I prefer the real life thing. I would just like to see Tommy fighting a body bag with slinkies on the side and boxing gloves oh, on the end it? of the slinkies. I'll just put like a five <laughs> minute video the on for the amateur fight that's coming up. Yeah, it's Tommy versus. It's slinkies. just me and him. Tommy me versus Bob. slinky arms. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of arms, Rob, how are your baby hands, and how are you in general? Oh, I got all my baby hands back. I don't have them with me right now. I, oh I, no! I, I don't want to bring. You got them all of them back, myself. but they're not with him. I was looking forward <laughs> to seeing them. Did you want me to get them? I, I mean, I could. While well, you get them, we hear what fam's doing. It doesn't look like you can move around much because your room is on fire. Yeah, no, no. I was gonna say like my house is on fire. So <laughs> not exactly. Everything's fine though, right? No, yeah, but this is okay. Uh, uh, this Everything's is fine. fine. <laughs> this is fine. It's a very 2020 esque. Uh, you know what? it never ends it never ends because like where were you one year ago and like how oblivious were you to like how much the world was going to change uh i can tell you where i was one week ago or one year ago i was still working in new york at my job i didn't have to wear a mask when i went in um i was able to stand within six feet of my co-workers i was able to heat up food at my work and i was you know living my life like a normal person would but then this little thing called covid was killing people yeah it was a rhetorical question but thanks for... <laughs> i don't take rhetorical questions i only oh take questions God, that i can funny. answer <laughs> i appreciated it the play-by-play was nice thanks <laughs> Really I, like, I like how you described the pandemic to us like we've never heard of it like wait what yeah like, you guys might not have experienced this, this totally worldwide pandemic that you guys may have not experienced it only affects me mm-hmm. my specific. well most of the time the world revolves around me so that's why i thought the pandemic was a similar situation when did this what? become so egocentric oh my god 
the fan. Well, I was told. I was told. I was told that I apparently, uh, in my own productions as well as in one shot, that I uh, uh, punch down on myself a lot of the time. So I need to be less humble and more uh, self preserve not preserving but like self you're a jam lifting you're a strawberry preserve i don't like it go back to the old you mm. <laughs> yeah i'm working on it so <laughs> <laughs> it's not the time to workshop new use new yeah, that, that, that's season two of uh one shot <laughs> oh man a whole channel like it's season two <laughs> <laughs> spin off series all right well uh that's good i'm glad that everyone's doing somewhat okay uh how you are know, you I'm doing fine. Uh, working. I'm streaming still, trying to put out videos, and we're back doing one-shot stuff. We took a little bit of a break because people got busy, which is normal. You know, I got busy. Tommy was busy beating up Bob. Olivia's doing school. Rob is trying to build a bridge with his tiny hands. You know, everybody gets busy. Put this fire out, you know. It's just (laughs) very time-consuming. At least you're warm all the time. The never-ending fire that goes out. Let me just grab my coffee real quick. (laughs) But there is uh, there is one thing relative because you know we got to hit at least one newsworthy uh, segment every podcast. So the mm-hmm. one newsworthy thing that we can really hit on it came out on Sunday was Oprah Winfrey's interview with Meghan Markle and uh, Prince Harry. I don't know if he's still a prince, he's but um, Harry, mm-hmm. whatever his last name is, he's not even uh, the most popular British Harry because like Harry Styles is. It was like the second Harry. I was gonna say Harry Potter was the first one. <laughs> wow, there, he's going to third now. <laughs> wow Jesus. let's just but, spend the rest of the, of the podcast just listing all the british harrys that we <laughs> i think we're done but i, mean, I can't think any, of any other british harrys at any point in the podcast just 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 throw it in okay uh <laughs> there was an interview with oprah winfrey and Meghan markle and prince harry that came out on sunday where the two of them but primarily Meghan markle were basically explaining the very severely poor treatment that they received from the crown the royal um the royal family uh and the what not the show the crown no uh the the literal monarchical crown of britain um and basically Meghan markle was exclaiming that she was going through suicidal thoughts and had depression and she was not given any help from the royal family as well as the constant bombardments of press attacks that they were receiving from the british tabloids you know attacking Meghan markle and racist remarks and the family and stuff like that so basically this whole interview was Meghan markle and harry basically laying it all out there not saying names but they were saying that you know they were trapped in the establishment and they were getting no help from their family and they weren't receiving security and it was basically just them uh, you know, tarnishing the reputation that the British family has, uh, which apparently the Crown and the British family rely so heavily on public perception that this uh, interview is being referred to as a bombshell interview. Uh, I know pretty much, you know, since we're all Americans, uh, we don't have that big of insight. But does anyone care what is happening? Does anyone have any interest in how Meghan Markle was treated? Um, does anyone care at all what's happening? I think the it's obvious that there's a bigger societal problem, one with racism, whether it's here or across the pond, and then also mental health issues, um, trying to take care of that. Even at the highest status, people struggle and need help and it's still hard to find it. So we need to work towards making mental illness and mental health more of a priority and obviously making racism less and less until it hopefully eventually stops. But yeah, I, I think those are societal problems that we really need to start fixing. Yeah, it's just crazy that, like, someone of that status and, like, that platform, like, they're in the royal family and is still just experiencing such awful treatment, both by, like, the press, her own family, or I guess, like, in- is her in-laws? Mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> like, that's kind of weird. Like, my in-law is the queen. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I-, I-, I care mostly just about, like, how awful that was or is for her um and having to like go on Oprah to get heard about that and like I did do a little bit of like research or it's just kind of been on my timeline all day about Megan saying like you know I want to speak up and I like used to speak up and use my voice so much um and now I'm like silent and then Oprah said I think like 
did you become silent or were you silenced? And I think that just speaks volumes about like people trying to speak their truth, do the work, those types of things. And obviously in her situation, that is very difficult. So I feel for her, that's, that's horrible. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, obviously, like, the British monarchy doesn't really affect us Americans too much. Um, and it really is, like, more of a, they really don't have power. It's more of just, like, a, a public, um, like, for the public eye and like, in England, too. But it's, I almost want to say, like, inspiring to see, like, what they've gone through and, like, how they're able to kind of, like, be their own people and, like, kind of escape this. Because you could see it was, like, I mean, like, a really toxic environment for both of them. They were, and the way they were saying it was, like, it wasn't going to get better. It was only going to get worse as they continue on with their family, as they, you know, grow their family, they try to branch out. Like, it's going to be very controlling, you know, and maybe even manipulative um, in their eyes. So to see that they're able to kind of break off and, like, you know, separate and now tell their side of the story, because if there's one thing we do know, it's, like, the British, you know, uh, royal family can be very secretive and very tabloidy and just, like, uh, the only thing that goes out, that gets out is what, they want to be heard so to hear the other side of the story I mean you know like there's always two sides and then you know what's what's the truth or what's in the middle and stuff like that but to hear like you know kind of her um you know her side and then her experience and how obviously that's not what was being reported on or what was or what people knew about it's kind of sad but it's also kind of like inspiring to see that they're able to like be free and you can almost see like there's like a sense of relief you know like they're obviously cut off and they won't have their titles anymore but I mean they're probably much happier because of it you know and there was an interesting point where they said I think Harry said something like he almost feels bad or like I'm not re I'm paraphrasing that but like almost like sympathizes for his brother and his father because like Harry was able to get out because he's only like he's not he's only like fifth in line to the throne which I mean is really slow because obviously hasn't moved in quite a while but like his brother and his father like they're stuck like if they were ever even to think about stepping down like the whole thing would just because they're next in line and then you know second in line to the throne so like they're stuck you know and it kind of goes to show you that like oh you know like I wish I was a royal I wish I was you know the king the queen the prince or whatever and it's like maybe you don't you know because you could tell their lives are just so structured and so um and like they, uh, there's just so many eyes watching them and they need to present themselves in such a certain way well it's also just like crazy difficult too like <clears throat> this institution this family has been around for like how long so like yeah. obviously things aren't changing from the inside out mm -hmm. you, like you leave like and those people that you, like the dad I don't know any of their names like I literally don't know any of their names but like they don't have the option to leave um and so it is just so sad and it's empowering to see like people uh, like Megan and the other the guy I don't Harry. know his name Harry. Third most famous Harry. Harry. oh Harry uh um uh, like leave and step away from that toxic environment like you said yeah, I mean, uh, and the most, um, you know, recent thing that people are comparing it to was when Princess Diana did an interview with BBC, um, and she was, you know, visibly unhappy in that whole interview, and it was, back then, that was also con considered a bombshell interview, and then, you know, Princess Diana died in a car accident, a lot of people believe that the um, British monarchy had something to do with it, whether they had her killed or had the accident happen, something like that, so... Uh, a lot of people compare it to the fact that Meghan Markle and Harry are able to leave the crown uh, on their own choosing, you know, without having to deal with something of that kind of consequence. But like we said, it's not super important for us because British monarchy, it doesn't even, isn't even considered the ruling class of Great Britain. Second off, we're all American and none of us clearly care that much. Um, so we can really move on, but I want to stay on the path of monarchy, right? Because monarchies are still cool. And it's interesting to call yourself a king and or queen. And I was wondering, how easy do you think it would be for us to create our own new monarchy? <laughs> I think um, we, as, as in like, we as in like us four or we uh, as in yes, it is <laughs> us four. Is going it's, back. It's, it's us four. So America you know how like, back. if you look. There's a little it, tidbit I, I wanted to mention before they step down away from their from their titles and, and all that stuff uh the uh megan markle and prince former prince harry's child archie could have been the king and the president of the united states because he was born a citizen because of his mother and obviously being sixth in line to the throne is not too bad well that's the other thing that was, was a 300 year plan 
by King George. He wrote it all down in the book. <laughs> he closed it off and he's like, guys, Meghan Markle's going to do it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, who are we talking about? King well, George. another part of the story that we that we were talking about was the fact that their their son, Archie, wasn't going to be given any titles to begin with after he was born. Like he, They weren't going to give that child any heir to the throne yeah. potential at all. Really? Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. You didn't hear about that? So, yeah. If what makes a weird situation. Sorry. Because uh, there was a few like points. I wasn't able to watch the whole thing because I had to sleep. Um, I had to get, wake up early for my job. And also, I think it was just more of a long interview. Uh, my mom was switching between that and American Idol, you know. You know those As it goes. Yeah. yeah, of course. <laughs> um, but if, if what Meghan Markle was saying was true, um, uh, a lot of someone or some people in the royal family were concerned about the color of um, the baby's skin, if it was going to be too dark and how that would look for um, the British you know, monarchy to have someone of that race or color in the um, royal class. So they said even before the baby was born, they, they were not going to give it a title. And basically they give everyone a title. Um, although I think they've been trying to scale it back in recent years, but obviously like that's definitely kind of like a slap in the face and it kind of shows you like, hey, you're not exactly welcome here. Yeah, definitely so, blatant. Yeah, without a doubt. In but, our monarchy, anyone can be a prince or a princess. Okay, oh, we're, we are, yeah. like we are getting where, back. Like, you can be a lord, like if you buy like a, a square foot of land in Scotland, like you could be a lord, like legally. I, I think my first order of business would be to knight every Trader Joe's employee. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. just as uh, big after you, Rob, huh? Well, my kingdom. <laughs> They do so much for our communities. Um, for me personally, I think it's only right that we start with that. So that's my first order of business. Anybody else know what they're going to you know do? What, you know what would be an interesting way to start this monarchy? I, I like this idea of sticking with Trader Joe's, right? So obviously Trader Joe's, nationwide company, very popular. They have a lot of land in different parts, right? So you could go the feudalism route and be like, hey, Trader Joe's, partner up. If we use your land, you know we we got our kingdom it's not it's not all encompassing but you got little splotches all over the country right digging into america's land starting the monarchy of trader joe's my trader joe's is by a party city just throwing that out there that could be or anything by october city city is is the city called party city or is it (laughs) is, is it the village of party city do you know what party city is oh i know what party city is but i'm just saying is that he's being the rob joke (laughs) <laughs> so what about this monarch <laughs> it's almost in, we uh, are I, partnering I would, send, I, I would i would i would get my quill i'd write a letter in uh with a feather uh tie it to a pigeon and mail it to jeff bezos seeing if you wanted to out al- uh to become allies <laughs> i would offer him friendship and he would offer me uh 200 billion dollars to spend my kingdom 200 so, billion <laughs> that's a lot of money uh, that, that's how much he's worth you, you didn't hear about that no, I mean, I'd give it all to you. And then, I, and then I would have him send a pigeon to, to Elon Musk, so then we could add another like 180 billion. But they're there. feuding because because Elon Musk surpassed him, so he he's angry. No, but Jeff Bezos. There's no way Elon it's, Musk it's surpassed Jeff Bezos. He and did, I'm just, and, and I'm and I'm just a little bit way off in third. <laughs> <laughs> if you were to rank the three of us, I would be third, but that's still top three. Yeah, hey, out of the three of us, not many people could say that. Listen, I don't care what you guys say. Olivia and I are going to start this monarchy with Trader Joe's, okay? We are going to go nationwide. And I got supporters who are down with the Trader Joe's partnership. You know, I got people in my family who like Trader Joe's. I'm sure Olivia's got people in her family who like Trader Joe's. If we get this started, we can create a whole new established government in the United States that does not have to abide by the, the uh, Democratic Republic that we have going right now. Okay? Where are your armies? Where are your knights? Where are your weapons? Trader Joe's employees. Olivia yeah. was just saying she's going to knight the employees. They're not fighting for you. <laughs> They're fighting you for Trader Joe's. You got to go like one of those like sports <laughs> complexes with the guns and like the fishing rods and and all and all the like. As pro shop. Dick sporting goods. Say, I don't want to start naming brands, but I mean. <laughs> so then, I'll just get every yeah. single person that plays Animal Crossing. Because they know how to forage, they know how to build yeah. weapons, and they, they know how to. Town just living in a town and collecting bugs and, and contributing to, to the feudal system. 
See, listen, this is the best way I think all of us can coordinate in creating this wonderful monarchy that we're going to be part of, right? It's clearly going to be funded by Trader Joe's. The army is established by Trader Joe's. So we know we're indebted to Trader Joe's, but that's down the line. We'll solve that problem later, okay? We're going to get our transportation. We're going to get our transportation from Elon Musk when we get all the Teslas. He's okay. going to fund us with Dogecoin. And then <laughs> Tommy is going to supply, you know, the defensive units with a bunch of bobs. All right. It's going to be great. And he's <laughs> going to be the leading general because he's going to teach everybody how to fight their slinky arm bobs. And we're going to be the new monarchy. We just got to find out what our name is. Like like, what what is would our name? nation be called? All right. Before we do that, I think we need to figure out who's who within this monarchy. Yeah, so, uh, it, 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 sounds like, it sounds like Chris already appointed himself king, and I didn't vote on that. But then again, <laughs> it's a monarchy, to... dude. There's no voting. Okay, we, we don't have a parliament. King? He was born into this. I created the idea. I'm meant to be king. Okay, how it goes. you're king. So, Wait, so what's Olivia? Jester? You just can't wait oh, to be king. I was gonna demote myself to jester, but I'll be king. I'm cool with that. Olivia could also be king. Okay. I mean, hell, king. it is. It's International Women's Day, right? Yeah, so Olivia could Olivia could be the king. Yes, I'm done with that. Is Rob What's Justin? King? So, also, in our kingdom, uh, in our kingdom, it's going to be all asexual terms. So king will just king or queen can represent man or woman. All right, we have no care of what the titling is. You be whatever you want to be. There we Rob go. is 100 percent the jester. <laughs> <laughs> you know, guys, we're going. <laughs> First of all, business would be get all the king's horses and all the king's men and figure out the Sumpty Dumpty situation because it has gone on for too long. You're just doing stand up at different Trader Joe's. <laughs> <laughs> but he's only he's only allowed to do work with his tiny hands. But, but then they're gonna throw their organic tomatoes at me. <laughs> they're, they're vegan, uh, gluten free tomatoes. <laughs> Your knowledge on Trader Joe's is a bit concerning. <laughs> You'd be so lucky. I watch from afar with my binoculars from the bushes. <laughs> from the party city. All right, so we talked about our monarchy. Clearly, Tommy and Rob have a little bit of apprehension towards the idea, but frankly, I think it's great. Um, and, you know, with our uh, female king, Olivia... Uh, I would like to pivot to where today is, the day that we are recording on. It is International Women's Day. March is also uh, international, it's Women's History Month, if I'm mm -hmm. correct. Um, but today is International Women's Day. And I thought that would be a great opportunity for the four of us to give a little bit of a shout out to the women in our lives that have inspired us or positively impacted our lives or people who have helped us uh, or influenced us into becoming the people that we are. So I will give the floor to a uh, known woman appreciator and fan of women, Tommy Rinaldi. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm surprised that's my title. That's great. Um, <laughs> uh, quick shout out to my mom because she's the best person in this world. Um, cancer survivor, uh, single mom. She's been killing it forever. Uh, she, she's my best friend as well as a wonderful mother. Uh, Shout out to my grandma in heaven. She was also one of my best friends. She grew up, I grew up with her across the street uh, from us. Uh, and then she ended up living in our house uh, once things slowed down, down the road for everything. Um, watching Tom and Jerry with her, whatever it may be, watching Judge Judy uh, on the weekends and stuff like that. Just some of my best memories. And then obviously all the wonderful people within One Shot and PTV that I've met, that includes Olivia, Jill, Ivana, Megan and, and all, all these other wonderful people that we have uh, within that space that I, I really do appreciate. I've learned a lot from you guys and uh, I'm glad that we've given you the power to show your skills and talents. And I, I can't wait to see you guys grow into what we know you can be. So. Rob, how about you? Let's hear some women's appreciation. Of course, I got to shout out my mom first Thank, Thanks Babs for uh, going to all my basketball practices, my, my, my baseball practices, even though I didn't get a hit all season. She, she still came to all my games, so I'm very supportive. Uh, shout out to my grandma who, who uh, would pick me up from school and make me make me dinner and change my diapers, even up to last week. And just, just <laughs> <a nice woman. laughs> 
<laughs> and last but not least, uh, shout out to Amanda, my girlfriend for some reason. <laughs> she hasn't left me yet. Um, she's very supportive. She's achieving her dreams. And I'm so proud of her. And if you're watching, thanks. Uh-huh. Shout out to all women, too. Just every woman. If you're a woman, just, just, just pat yourself on the back like that. <laughs> Oh my you, god. You this, month. this is your month and no one can tell you otherwise. Wow. All right. Well, Olivia, follow that up somehow. And hopefully. Right. Uh, best, I um, first, I'd like to drop my Venmo. It's Olivia Dash Klein Dash Eleven um, for making 79 cents to your dollar. Um, you owe me. All of you. <laughs> I've already hustled my uh, band, um, and now <laughs> this is the next group of men uh, I've been speaking to today, so just had to, you know, drop that in there, if you feel so inclined, but if you hate women, like, I also I'm understand. Get it, Klein. Wow. Uh, <laughs> no, just kidding. But um, the first woman that comes to mind is my grandma. She's wonderful. She's my step grandma. Um, so she's a bit younger. She's, I honestly, I'm so bad at ages, but she's just been like really cool and hip and active. She got me into music. Um, wouldn't be the person I am without her. And today she actually just texted my sister and I, uh, surprising us with tickets to the Tab Benoit concert this summer, which is an artist that I really like. And I saw him for the first time with her. So I'm just really looking forward um, to doing that with her and spending time with her. And my mom, she's the best. She's wonderful. She has supported me through all of my crazy endeavors. And my sweet sister, shout out to you. You're so talented and I love you. There we go. We love love women's appreciation. Uh, Every day, every day should be women's appreciation. Um, And if you're not doing that, then you're horrible. Uh, but for myself, uh, I have a lot of women to um, thank for their influence on my life. I was pretty much raised by women. Um, I have to, of course, thank my mother and my sister. They are two of the cornerstone pieces in my life. Uh, both of them have influenced me in so many ways, of course, as well as my other mom, Ruth. Um, she's a wonderful lady. She has taught me so many things as well um, and always sides with me in an argument when I'm going against my mom. So that's always great. Uh, and of course I have to thank Jolene as well. My incredible girlfriend, she has pushed me so many points in my life to become a better person. Um, but all of the women in my family, uh, they're all incredible. Like I said, I was raised by women. I can't even fathom what my life would be like without so many incredible women, like my Nana, my aunt B, my aunt Gay, all of them. They're all wonderful. They all support me in everything that I do. And I thank you all very much, as well as all the the professional women that I have come across since I was in school to working in the TV industry now. As Tommy said, all the women that are included in one shot, like Olivia, Jill, Ivana, Megan, um, some of our PTV people like Erica, uh, some of my coworkers, um, they're all great. And like I said before, women should be appreciated every day and more than they already are. Um, And they deal with so much shit that they absolutely do not deserve. But speaking for everybody here at One Shot, we appreciate you and we thank you. And we hope that the future continues to get brighter for women because you absolutely deserve it. And the standards of practice today are outdated and inappropriate. Before we move on... I want to, one of us, all of us to shout out one female, whether it's musician, actor, actress, director, whoever, just a cultural influence as well. I'm going to go with Lauren Hill, uh, R&B star slash rapper uh, from the 90s. She influenced a lot of music that I listen to today. Um, one of the best voices while also being one of the best lyricists, not just women, but men and women. Uh, She's very talented. She's from New Jersey. She's awesome. Uh, put out one album, one of the best albums of all time. It was Education of Lauren Hill. And yeah, uh, go around, say who you would like. To, I'm going to uh, go with Janice Joplin. She changed the game from day one. She had many obstacles that she overcame, um, uh, mostly to do with her appearance. You know, she didn't look up, she didn't appeal to the male gaze. And she still freaking got up on stage, sang her heart out, and is one of, in my opinion, the best 
female vocalist to ever exist. Um, she's been a huge inspiration for me, both musically and in life. So couldn't do it without you, Janice. Rob, how about you? Uh, one of the first that came to my mind, a little bit outside, uh, but uh, Lisa Hanawalt, she's the, uh, I think the main animator and illustrator for BoJack Horseman, because literally if it was not for her, that show would not exist because it, um, uh, Bojack's my, uh, BoJack Horseman's like one of, if not my favorite show. So I know like a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. And when Raphael Bob Waxberg was creating the show, he's like, I can't draw horses. And, <laughs> and he's like, Lisa, I need you to draw the horses. And she's like, no. And he's like, please. <laughs> so he, to, he said no. So he tried to get other people and no one could draw a horse as good as her. So the, she, he eventually convinced her to um, help out. Literally Bojack would not be, would not exist without her. And she actually created her own series Two Gun Birdie um, oh, yeah. on I've Netflix, and now I think it's being picked up by Comedy Central for second season. I watched that one as well. Uh, Aquafina's in that. Uh, uh, she cameos. Uh, Ali Wong's um, and Tiffany Haddish are the two main stars in that. Really good series as well. Covers a lot of uh, intense topics with animation. So shout out to just all those women as well. Right, cool. And there's obviously a lot that I would love to get to, but I'm going to go with one of the greatest athletes of all time, Serena Williams. She is an inspiration to both men and women. Uh, even if you're not a fan of tennis, if you are just an avid sports watcher, or even if you're not, see, she could, she got a lot of people into sports. She is just a beast. She is an incredible athlete, someone who hopefully generations down the line will look upon her like we look at you know, modern day or ancient gods, because she's basically one of them. She is incredible. Um, her determination and her athleticism is unrivaled. And man, she seems like so much fun to even just meet in person and have nothing to do with tennis, just be able to talk to her. And I think she's truly an inspiration to all um, boys and girls out there who are interested in sports. And I think a lot of people should know about her as they already do. I mean, she's one of the faces of Nike. So she's done well there, but um, she's obviously inspired others. I mean, look at Naomi Osaka, now the new up and coming face of tennis. So that's who I would like to shout out Serena Williams. And of course, Venus Williams as well. The Williams sisters accelerated Americans into tennis um, and in the international sports world as well. So shout out to Serena and all female athletes, uh, you know, more female sports need to be on television. WNBA should be on television. The women's soccer league should be on television, softball leagues, um, anything, any hockey, women's hockey leagues, anything you women's can think of sports too. women's college sports and professional sports should be on television because they are fun. They're exciting. And there's a lot of really incredible athletes out there. Lovely. Yeah. So it's a lot of appreciating that we've been doing. Uh, hopefully everyone was able to stomach all of that. Huh. But Olivia, you have something fun for us to play today, and and it, hopefully this might be something down the line as well. Yes. But would you like to introduce it to us? Yes. So I got this little game for my birthday, <clears throat> and it's just called Who in the Room. And basically, you just get to like point fingers at people and be like, "Yeah, I think you would do this more than like I would do this type of thing." Some of them are like a little raunchy, so I'll save those. Some of them are just fun and silly. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you want to see the raunchy side of this, maybe we'll do like a part two or like a one full shot, shot after dark. Right. Yeah. <laughs> when we make one a Patreon the down the road. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. So the first question for who in this Zoom room? Who in the Zoom room can do the best Donald Duck impersonation? I think there's only one way to find out. No. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need, I'm not, I, it's definitely not me. I don't even know what, I can't even. Well, just do your best. I can't do even think best. of what Donald Duck sounds, it's like the. I could only I do the laugh, I think. Well, Olivia, I, I, I think you need to give us a line and then we all need to do that line. Like. Like we'll be a Donald Duck. I can sandwich. only do the laugh. <laughs> All right. Well, then how about this? If Tommy says he knows he can do the laugh. Let's hear Tommy yeah. do the laugh. Yeah. <laughs> I believe that he's the best. I'm. Yeah, I'm. He's I'm, the best I'm so going far. to say I can't do Let's anything hear it, close Rob. to that. I can't do come anything. On, come on, close Sam. To I can't. I know I can't. I will 100 percent do whatever the next one is. I know I can't do a Donald Duck. Okay. 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 We'll move on. So who in the room? <laughs> Oh boy. It sounded like a cat in like an airball situation. 
but love I it. loved the effort. Thank um, you. E for effort. Yeah. Okay, fam. Let's see. Who in the room can touch the tip of their nose with their tongue? Oh, shit. Come on, fam. You said you would do it. There we go. Yep. There you go, Tommy. I have to push my tongue out. That's pretty good. Rob just picks his nose all the time. <laughs> you really do it, Rob? I can't do it. I can't do it. Winner, like winner. Mine. There you go. Wow. That's Look impressive. Look at that jawline. Like... Handsome boy. <laughs> wow, this is really great for people who might be listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's one that I want to know, like, even if you're not in this room, like, have you been told, or that you look, just hear me out. Okay. Who in the room has been told that they look like some celebrity the greatest number of times? And if so, like, who's your guys' celebrity look alike? Because I don't think I have one, but if you think I do, tell me. I mean, I don't actually think I look like the person that I'm about to mention, but I've gotten it through like those social media app website things and it's josh peck and it's actually like the two-year mm-hmm. anniversary of meeting him and yeah. talking to him it is it's today it's 100 percent. it's two years today and him telling me that i have gentle eyes so i'll take that any time and time and day no but tommy i've actually thought that before i don't know if i've ever told you but like that thought has come to mind that you look like josh peck during the interview and like watching it back while editing and everything we have similar mannerisms so i totally understand that but I think it's because we kind of have like tilted from the inside eyes and like kind of droopy and stuff like that. I think that's the only comparison. (laughs) Sloped eyes. Yeah. I don't know. I don't get a lot of celebrity uh, comparisons. I feel like it would probably probably change if I didn't have a beard, but I feel like the only one that I could come close to is maybe like Jack Black, but even then it's not really that much of a comparison. I love it though. Yeah, it works. Yeah. I used people? to get the, I used to get more when I didn't have the beard. Like some people would say, like I look like Michael Sarah or like Michael <laughs> Tom Holland. But then, uh, and then the I worst. I get more Tom Holland. Was, like, <laughs> high school, not many of you know this, but, but I, I had a bowl cut. Like I had a full out, yeah. silky smooth bowl cut. So there was a picture of me that I put next to the picture of Coconut Head from Ned's Class. <laughs> like, I mean, like you just can't tell them apart. <laughs> Ever wow. since I got the beard, I've just been getting crappy ones. Like people call me like the brawny man or like George Clooney or like Brad Pitt. Like, oh, <laughs> oh my God. Come on, guys. Come on. I love oh, it. God. Chris has one. I'm like, no, no. People the muscles are there too. I look like Pam, but I think it's just my hair. Like girl. Yeah, it's definitely it's probably just like the small comparison of the hair. I don't I don't think you look like um Very- name. Jenna Fisher. Jenna Fisher, thank you. Yeah. So I don't know. I guess I'm just a celebrity, so I don't have a look like. Yeah. I mean, you're in a band, so that's enough. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We can do one more. Does that sound good? Sounds good to me. Okay. Who in the room was probably the loudest and most annoying as a child? Oh, I'm... it's a hundred. It's a hundred percent me. A hundred and fifty percent me. Ooh. And do you have a story to back that up? Uh, well, I mean, you guys know my personality now, like not in o- over a, a webcam setting but like in an actual room setting you guys have a video of me yelling about pork leg and cheese should and i put that in made. the edit no i don't want that i <laughs> don't want that put on the internet <laughs> um, roll it <laughs> <laughs> no but uh you know it's just imagine that but i had no sense of like decency or well not decency but like <laughs> when <laughs> to stop talking or to lower my volume or like not be a menace to society i wasn't sure. a bad kid i just you know, I like attention oh, wow. and I like making people laugh. So put those two together and you're just, a, you know, an adult's nightmare. I believe it. The youngest? Hmm? Are you the youngest child? Yeah, I'm, so I'm young. I, my, I only have one sibling. My sister's four years older than me. Okay, and then yeah, I'm the same, youngest. Same. And that's why, like, I was going to argue for, for me too, because I just wanted all the attention. I was like a little crybaby too. Yeah, but Rob, I feel like I feel like especially knowing you and how you are with first impressions, like you were probably a quiet kid. Because meeting you in college, which is when people have fully formed personalities, you were still quiet and shy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. About college. <laughs> <laughs> what happened, what happens in South Orange days and stuff? It's definitely not Tommy because he's also too yeah, shy no, no, up no, front. Tommy's just out. 
yeah, I'm quiet. Too nice. Olivia, I could see, I could see you being wanting to be like center of attention and loud, but then again, I don't know. I, I don't More know. If... Yeah, definitely center of attention. I would like make up stories to get people to like mm. think I was cool. Like I told people that my cousin was Hannah Montana. Mm. Wait, and I, I, as one does. believe this? Uh, yeah, because I made my mom sign a note saying that it was true. Really? Oh my god. Miley, really? Miss you. Tell my friend we get backstage passes. Olivia, come on. For the next for the next tour, when I open for her, because like oh, she's god. my cousin, so that's gonna happen. Um, <laughs> I'll get you guys in the green room for that. Easy in, you know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> shit I did like. That's yeah. crazy. <laughs> wow. I mean, that, Are you that, should Miley just, Cyrus? that should just skyrocket you to the coolness factor for pretty much anybody. Olivia, did you, are you, did you tell everybody Alex? that? Did you Wait, tell everybody Rob? that on uh, what was it, cinnamon roll and chili day? Oh, I didn't mention that. No. no. Damn it, Olivia. I was asking if you relate to Miley Cyrus or just Hannah Montana. It's confidential. Okay. Mm. Just like the identity, I get it. I thought you were gonna get the best of both worlds, but wow. Yeah. Wasn't that Lizzie McGuire? No. No. <laughs> That's what dreams are made of, fam. It's the theme song. <laughs> I didn't watch a lot of Disney as a kid. Get the limo out front. Listen here, boomer. <laughs> I mean, Hand Montana is kind of a boomer show in, in the context of kids our age. In the, to, Every show kids our age. <laughs> what? Kids younger than us didn't really grow up with Hannah Montana. Yeah, but they're not. We're not boomers. <laughs> I'm saying in. Cons- Okay, boom. In the context of oh, dude, it's more of like a millennial show, if anything. I would call I, anything dude, above I'm a zoomer. This up like 60 years. He's like, Yeah, you guys watch Hannah Montana. Guess you were born during the during World War II. I guess not. <laughs> anything above a zoomer is considered uh, uh anything above a zoomer is considered a boomer at this no, point. No, oh, Un- no, nah, dude. Millennials what? hold is so much power going? you can't skip over them. I guess I've been yeah. watching too much Twitch in the in, in, in the recent. Watching the History Channel, Tommy. <laughs> I don't watch cable. There's that's too much money. Okay, well that's probably a good place to leave this podcast. <laughs> Tommy doesn't know what generation we're in or from. Olivia is related to Hannah Montana and or Miley Cyrus. Uh, Rob is apparently. <laughs> That's definitely the best place to put it. We appreciated some women today. We talked about the monarchy. We're going to form a uh, a government agreement with Trader Joe's. We'll let you know how that goes in the future. Uh, appreciate a woman today. Uh, or if you're watching this on Wednesday when it's come out, every appreciate day. a woman always, every, day. every single day, every minute of every day for every day of your life. Um, this was Tommy Rinaldi, Robert Ruskowski, Olivia Klein, and of course myself, Chris Famulero. Please remember to like this video and subscribe to One Shot Entertainment. If you're not, we are still trying to get to 100 subscribers. We really hope we can reach that soon. Uh, I know our goal was, I think, March 13th. So we got five days, which it'll really be three days when we get, when this video goes out. So remember to subscribe to the channel, share with your friends, and um, come back for the next one. We hope to see you soon. We hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much and have a good one. One, two, three.